Coach Jarek here from Coach 511. Putting out a new podcast episode for everybody. I recently uh, put a poll up on our uh, Push 511 gym um, Facebook page, and I wanted to find out some stuff that was on the mind of some of our members and see if there was anything that I could help address. And one of the things that uh, came up to uh, and was asked on that poll was about recovery. And I thought this was a really, really good idea to go ahead and cover this because recovery is something um, that I don't think quite gets the the attention that it should uh, when it comes to training and, and fitness. So I'm going to take a few minutes, this won't be too long, to, to just really touch on that because a lot of the emphasis and a lot of the thing that gets the, the Instagram posts and follows is, is going to be what people do in the gym, uh, but what's just as important is what you do outside of the gym in order to recover from, from what you do. So uh, with, with recovery, the main purpose of recovery um, in the context of exercise and what we do in here um, is so that we can get the results that we're working towards and prevent injury. So how do we get um, results when we're in the gym? If, if, if we're talking about recovery and how it helps us get results, how do we get those results? So it, it's kind of a three-step process. First thing you do is you apply stress to the body, and that's uh, pretty much every day you go into the gym or into the box. Um, you do the workout, you do a strength session, whatever that is, you are applying some sort of a stress uh, onto your body. The second part of that um, is the recovery. You need to give your body and your muscles time to, and, and your nervous system time to recover from the stress that you have put on that body. And then when you take the stress that you applied onto your body and then you allow yourself to recover from it, that is where you receive the adaptation from that stress you put on your body. And that adaptation is the gains that everybody's looking to get, whether that is weight loss gains, weight gain gains. <laughs> Um, strength gains, whatever that is, you need to apply a stress to the body, recover from that stress in order to get the adaptation from that stress that you apply to your body. Um, so, and again, how do we apply stress to our body in the gyms? Um, it, it's either through strength work, uh, through our metabolic conditioning, our typical workout of the day. So, um, how do you recover uh, from the stress that you apply to your body? Uh, the first thing is you don't use that muscle right away. So allow it to rest. Um, and this will go into a later podcast where we talk about programming, but you want to try and avoid the exact same mo movement pattern um, day after day after day. So if, if you have a workout where you're doing an upper body press one day, the next day you want to try and avoid that same upper body press um, and maybe go for an upper body pull. Now, there's a lot more detail that goes into that, and again, I'll talk about that in a later episode, but you, you kind of get the idea there. Um, the other thing is you, you want to try and understand the, your sympathetic nervous system and your parasympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system. So that sympathetic nervous system um, is the fight-or-flight response that we have, and, and that's that uh, accelerated heart rate, constricts your blood vessels, and increases blood pressure. So that's that's that feeling that gets you ready to go. Uh, when you start to feel that three, two, one go in the countdown for the workout, that little bit of butterflies in your stomach and your heart rate starts to get up a little bit, that's that fight or flight. That That is preparing your body um, to receive the stress that you're about to put onto it. So it works well. And, and, and one thing you wanna make sure you do before you go into a workout is prime that sympathetic nervous system. So how can you do that? One is you can do breath work. Um, there are certain ways you can do breathing exercises in order to, to activate that system. Um, specifically, the exhale, I'm sorry, the inhale of the breath is a sympathetic breath. Um, so that's one way you can help prime that. Uh, and another thing, something that we typically do in here every day is a proper warm up. If you warm your body up right um, and, you, and you get yourself ready for that workout, it's a good way to prime that sympathetic nervous system. And I'm sure some of you have gone into workouts before. Um, and just the first, if you feel like that first round really just doesn't feel right, your body doesn't feel like it's in a good space, it's probably because your warm up wasn't sufficient enough. And then it takes a, a round or two to kind of get into the workout when you start to feel better. Um, that's that's partly because you're priming that sympathetic nervous system to, to ready your body to accept the stress that you're going to put on it. Now, the parasympathetic nervous system, that is, if the sympathetic is your fight or flight, the parasympathetic is your rest and digest. Rest and digest. 
So that parasympathetic nervous system um, conserves energy as it slows the heart rate down, increases uh, intestinal and gland activity, and relaxes the muscles in the GI tract. So this is this is that the, the nervous system that allows your body to just chill and recover and allow your body the time to basically just turn off so it can start to recover and then adapt from those stresses that you put on it. So how can you get parasympathetic when you're done your workout? A couple of different ways. One, again, breath work, specifically the exhale um, is a good way to to uh, start to work that. Those slow, long exhales work. Um, there's actually an app out there from Brian McKenzie, the old CrossFit endurance guy, um, called State App, and it's a really good way to um, really good app to follow that that works on breathing uh, uh, programs to one get you warmed up, one to calm you down, one to put you to help you sleep a little bit better. So. Um, that's a good resource out there. It's called the State app, S-T-A-T-E. Um, another one, uh, for those of you familiar with Ramwad, it's basically a, uh, a, a, a branches off the tree of yoga. But again, it's a slow flow where you're basically holding some positions for one, maybe two minutes at a time. Slow breathing, nice and calm. It's a really good way not only to uh, help cool your body down and stretch after a workout, but to to get yourself in that in that recovery state um, to allow your body the time to turn down. It's telling your body that we're done working and that it can turn off that that high stress um, atmosphere that it was in before. Another thing is foam rolling. So foam rolling, it, knowing that foam rolling kind of helps activate that parasympath- parasympathetic nervous system, you should then think of when should you be foam rolling. So. Um, I would say you shouldn't warm up and then foam roll and then do your workout. Because if we already talked about your warm up as a way to prime that, that fight or flight system, and then we have you foam roll, which then would activate that rest and digest system, and then go into a workout, that's not necessarily the best route to go through it. So if you're going to foam roll uh, before a workout, it should be before your warm up. So the first thing you do when you come in, Foam roll a little bit, get yourself, uh, and then go into your warm up to get yourself ready. So after a workout, foam rolling is a really great way. The compression from the foam rolling helps activate that parasympathetic nervous system and gives your body the, the cues it needs to know it's time to, to calm down and recover. Um, another one, float tanks. Uh, if you have one in your neighborhood, the, those uh, was zero zero buoyancy tanks. Uh, a great way to just um, float in there and and slow breathing and calm down as well. Uh, and then lastly, uh, if you don't have access to any of that stuff, just walks in nature. If you have a local trail near you, um, just nice slow walks, nose breathing only uh, is a good way to to really kind of calm down and get yourself outside. It's a good way for active recovery as well. If you want to get outside and do a little bit of moving, just nice calm walks through, through nature works well. Um, just find a nice trail with a lot of tree cover. It works wonderfully. So once you begin that, that recovery process, and ideally you want to begin that recovery process as soon as you can once you're done your workout or applying that stress to your body, because the sooner you can get into that recovery mode, the sooner you can recover from the stresses you put on your body and, and be able to work out again. So part of the reason that you'll find people do um, two a days, a lot of high level athletes will do two a days, um, is because the more work you can get in, uh, the more volume you can you can handle, um, you're going to get more uh, more results. The only catch to that is if you do not recover properly between the morning session and your evening session, and you don't allow your body the chance to recover, you will do more harm than good. So I can't stress that enough. The recovery process is what allows your body to take on more stress that you put onto it. So the the recovery is a really, really important thing um, for you to, to focus on it. Again, the sooner you can get into that recovered state, the better. Uh, and then after that, um, that allows you to adapt from the stress. 
Uh, but again, it can only occur when we allow our body time to recover from the stress that we apply to the body. Um, and this this whole uh, thought about applying stress to the body, this can apply to uh, building a stronger mindset as well. And I'm going to talk about that next episode. Next episode. But throughout your day, there's going to be little moments when you're going to have stress applied to you, um, and then how you handle that stress, and then uh, and then allow yourself to get out of that and recover from that will help give you more adaptations in your mental mindset. So we'll talk about that more next episode. But um, just wanted to take a couple quick minutes here to discuss uh, recovery when it comes to fitness and exercise. Um, if you have any questions at all, please don't uh, hesitate to reach out to me, uh, Jarrett at push511.com. Um, and also, we do have here every Sunday morning at 9 a.m., we do have a, a yoga session here, uh, which again is a really, really good way to come in, um, end your week on a really, really good note, um, and get a little bit of mobility and uh, recovery work in. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to myself. Um, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you.